welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Bailey and today's video is going to be a detailed grooming my doodle at home video I do have one other grooming video but I thought I would do an updated version and just get really detailed for you guys if it's your first time grooming grooming at home I really want to make this video informational for you guys and really take you through step by step so I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. This is my doodle that I will be grooming today. If you are familiar with my channel and following along with my videos, then you already know that this is Moose. But if you are new, this is Moose. He is a F1B Bernadoodle and he is 80 pounds. So just for size reference, he is a large boy, which does take a lot of time to groom but if you are trying to save money or just want to be able to do it at home by yourself and not wait for an appointment at the groomers then i think grooming your dude at home is a really good option i did forget to mention at the beginning that i will be splitting this up into two days which is my biggest tip if you have a large breed doodle or even just dog in general to break it up into different days or just different times and not trying to do it all at once because it is a lot and kind of overwhelming. The very first thing I always do is brush out my doodle. I always start with like a wide paddle brush and these pins are pretty long just because Moose's coat is usually thick so when you're looking at brushes for your doodle consider how long the pins need to be depending on how thick their coat is and then I always use a good old stainless steel wide tooth comb so I will start with this as like a general brush over get out I guess any knots or whatnot and then I will go through with this and this will really tell you where knots are I know moose right now has a lot of cockaburrs just from being outside and we went hiking this past weekend so just really getting detailed with knots and just getting all that stuff out before you bathe them is really important. All right, I guess to show you guys a before, before brushing, cutting his hair, anything. This is what he's looking like. Right, my moose? Definitely needs some eye and face trimming. Some paw trimming, huh? That's kind of... What you're looking like right now, huh, buddy? The back side. So I wanted to show you guys two different tips real quick when you're brushing your doodle. One is with the paddle brush after you're done brushing. Instead of trying to pick it out, I always use my wide tooth comb to go through it and it gets it out way better than picking it with my fingers can and then the second tip is that when you're brushing their legs if you ever need to lift it up do it like directly against their body don't like try and pull out so that's more uncomfortable with them and it's not good for their muscles to be pulling it out like that it's just not natural to them um, which I've made that mistake before when I'm trying to brush the back leg but if you keep it pretty much like straight up right up against their body it's just more natural for them and it makes it less uncomfortable like if you need to get the feet so that's some of the tips I've learned over doing this so now I'm gonna go in with the wide tooth comb this is great again for getting knots and really brushing out the face around the paw just getting really detailed in your brushing it is now on to the bath stuff so I'm gonna show you guys what I use well since I don't have the bathtub anymore I'm just gonna use the good old yard hose so I'm using that and then 
Um, I'm not particular to any shampoo or conditioner. I've not found one that I'm like in love with. Um, but right now I'm using this Scalp Honor Shampoo. I think it's a cleaner product, so not the best as far as ingredients. I got this at Marshalls and I do like the smell, so that's what I'm currently using. And then for conditioner, I'm using Chris Christensen Detangling Conditioner. This is what it looks like. Um, I'm almost done with this and I probably won't be rebuying it just because of the expense and because I am looking for more clean products. So yeah, I haven't found one that I particularly love, but that's just what I have and what I'm using. And then this last thing is not a necessity, but it is nice to have if your doodle has very long and thick hair. And it is like, I forget what it's called, um, but like a scrubber. And it has these nice rounded pins on it. And it just helps get the shampoo and conditioner deeper into their coat. And it probably feels nice to your dog too, like a good scratch while they're getting a bath. So not a necessity, but I do have it and I do like using it for my doodle. Good boy. All right, so now that we're done at bathing our dogs and look like a hot mess, um, I thought I would show you guys my bathing process just in case if that would be helpful to you. So of course you start by soaking your dog with the water hose and then I do shampoo all over the body and I wait on the head until later. So I shampoo the body, rinse it off, then I put conditioner everywhere except the head and then when I'm ready to rinse off the conditioner, that's when I shampoo his head as best as I can. That way it's not sitting there and in case it runs into his eyes, I just like to do it like the last thing and rinse it off as quickly as I can after putting it on. That way it doesn't, like I said, get into his eyes, anything like that. So then I'll rinse that off with the rest of the body conditioner. So yeah, that's kind of my process for bathing mousse and just ignore my shirt. Of course, I'm soaked and my shorts are soaked as well, but that's what happens. <laughs> um, so now I dry off mousse and I start with a towel and this is called a Furminator. It's kind of like a sham wow, but for dogs. So usually this is hard, but I already went ahead and wet it. So it's usually like kind of stiff and then you wet it and you wring out all the water and it's like ready to use. And this is really great at absorbing all the water, like excess water and get them pretty dry before I blow dry him. So I don't even really use like a normal towel. I will just use this and find that it does 
even better than a normal towel. And like with a normal towel, like once it's soaked, it's soaked. But when this is soaked, you just wring it out and then you can keep reusing it. So less laundry and just highly effective. So again, this is called a Furminator and that's kind of the logo for it. Um, I wonder if a sham wow will work or like a house towel that's like this but I this was given to me years ago when I first got moved so I'm not exactly sure especially for big dogs this is nice to get as much water off of them as possible before you blow dry because the more water you get off of them before blow drying the less time you have to blow dry them which that's a whole hot process in and of itself so if you can find one, I would recommend it. It's not a necessity, but just makes it more time efficient if that's what you're trying to do. After towel drying, I go ahead and blow dry my mousse. This is what I use. It is, I believe it is that brand. I found this on Amazon and I really like it. I've had it, I believe for over a year. I love it. It comes with three different nozzles and it tells you in the instruction booklet what each nozzle does. This one is like the fluffy one. So that's the one I use for my doodle. I just love how it turns out after I blow dry him with this. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and blow dry him. And while I blow dry him, I do go around in circles. That way I don't like heat up his skin or anything like that, just to avoid that. And then sometimes I will use a brush just to make sure, double, triple, make sure there are no knots while I'm blow drying him because that would be a mess to untangle. So anyways, I am going to do that. <laughs> moose a little bit ago I took a break and showered hence the wet hair but I just wanted to show you guys what moose looks like after I blow dry him he's laying on my bed right now but this is what he looks like and his hair is very straight it looks like he came back from the dry bar huh the only place that I do not blow dry is his head because he does not like it and he's very good and lets me do everything else to him so the only place I don't blow dry is his head and then I just leave the box fan on I turn it off so I could talk and you guys could hear me but um I just let that blow and he's already dry but yeah that's why it looks curlier than his body you look handsome huh you just wait for tomorrow you'll feel much better mm-hmm so that is all the grooming for today. I will catch you guys tomorrow morning when I go through my process for actually cutting Moose's hair. All right, it is the next day and I actually wanted to film this in the morning, but I ran out of time and I can't film it during the day because it is currently summer in Texas, which means it's like 100 plus. And I think today was like 110, so I have to wait until the evening, so. It is five o'clock now and then I'm going to finish, hopefully finish the rest of Moose's grooming. I have to, you know, shave his body and then do trimming around his paws and face. So that's what I'm gonna show you guys today. But first I am quickly going to brush him out. Just a general brush, not very detailed with a paddle brush. So let's do that. <laughs> situation guys it's been a little minute since I brushed mousse I did that around like five and right now it is seven o'clock and so I brushed him and I went to cut his hair and my clippers were not working like we're not cutting his hair 
and I was just getting so frustrated because I have two sets of clippers. One is like an Andy's professional grade clippers that I spent good money on. Doesn't work after a year. And then an Amazon one just stopped after a year and I don't know, it's just frustrating and I'm trying to get this done. So I ran to PetSmart real quick to grab a set and I think they will work. But I just wanted to talk to you guys about clippers. I don't have one that obviously that I love and I think the one I got, I don't know if I'm going to love it, but it'll do for now. Um, but the first one that I got was the Andy's AGC Super Chew Speed. I got this one, Moose was a puppy. It quit on me after a year, it still works. But I feel like the two speed is not the best after a while and it just doesn't cut his hair anymore and I should probably get rid of this but I spent like two to three hundred dollars on it so it's very hard to let go. It just doesn't cut his hair. So if you have any suggestions or tips like it still works it just doesn't cut his hair. Um, if you have any like advice for me I'd really appreciate it. Um, this is what it looks like, like it's not beaten up or anything. So yeah, I don't know. This only lasted me a year. I don't know if it's just the set. I don't know. So when those stopped working, I was like, well, I'm not gonna spend another $200, $300 for clippers. So I went on Amazon and found like a inexpensive, highly rated set. And this only lasts me a year. Again, this is the uh, one is all which I used in my last grooming video. And I like it because this is wireless and like it still works, the speed on it is really good because you can change the speed setting right here. Um, but the blade guards are plastic and the metal guards that I used with my Andes didn't fit here and I was not gonna buy another set of guards. So I just use the plastic ones and I think I've used this twice and I don't know why, it's just not cutting. So I think I might keep this set though for his paw pads. So if you're looking for a set of clippers that is inexpensive that you would like to start or see if you want to get into grooming, I would maybe go with this one. Like check the reviews on Amazon for yourself, but this one was highly rated and it did work. For like a year I think at most like $50 I don't know prices have gone up since then if you're wanting to try and see if you want to start grooming your doodle at home then maybe you can check out these and then the one that I just picked up and we'll see how they go um, these are the Andy's easy clip whisper clippers and first of all I was very surprised when they pulled <laughs> this packaging out because my Andy's that I got I guess two years ago was just like throwaway package so they really like up their branding and this is like the graphic designer in me but I really like the font here and just like the layout of it it's just beautiful to me anyways this is what the box looks like and it comes with the clipper six attachment combs which are plastic a hard case of blade guard blade cleaning brush and blade oil so Again, I was very surprised. Yeah, it comes with this hard case, which this $200, $300 one that I bought did not. Um, I think this one was $65. Because again, not trying to spend hundreds of dollars if they're not even gonna work after a year. So I already opened it and kind of went through it. But again, just like with their branding stuff, they have like these stickers, which I thought was very interesting and just like their branding cards and just like the type on that i just really like it um so anyways and then it comes with yeah the blade guards which are plastic so i'm not going to use these because i did bring in my blade guards that i had from my andy the metal ones and they had like all of their clippers on the wall that you can like test out i guess or like feel and hold in your hand um, so I know that they fit and actually it's still on there. Um, so this is what it looks like. It's seriously basic and Andy's basic and it has one speed and obviously it is corded. And then 
I guess the blade oil and the tiny blade brush. So I did try this on this and it was doing a whole lot better job than my other two. So he does have like a patch on him. I'll show you him in a second. So I'm going to try these again. If you have clipper recommendation, clipper advice for me, I would really appreciate it because your girl is struggling over here. The clipper set that I have that do work with the two Andes that I haven't bought. Um, the brand is Shinboa and it comes with eight different sizes. I've had these for three years and I still have them. Great condition. I would recommend these. I would double confirm if they would go with all Andes. So just double check that before you buy these and an Andy set. But yeah, they come with so many sizes. I don't even think I've used all of these. But again, just like really still in really good condition after three years let's see I've definitely used like the half inch before which has his hair in it but still just really, I don't know if that was focusing <laughs> um, but still really good condition and it comes with a case to help store them which is really nice so these are the metal blade guards that I will be using. So I have this here and before I get into the cutting part, um, just other things that I have with me while I'm grooming him is a grocery bag to put his hair in. And then I also keep my brush and my comb nearby just in case I run into a knot with the clippers. I'm gonna just quickly brush it out and keep on going. Just some tips for grooming a doodle that I've learned over just doing it myself. Whatever blade guard that I use on the body, I always use a size or two up for the head just because your doodle would look really weird if they were one length all the way over. And another tip is to not go back over the section in the opposite direction. So what I mean by that is like, so I have the clippers and I'm cutting him this way. Don't go back over it the opposite way because it actually cuts the hair shorter than what you have the blade guard on. Um, I hope that makes sense, but yeah, I've definitely learned that when I've done that and I'm like, why did it turn out shorter than what the blade guard length was? And that is why. And then I guess just like a last tip that I can think of right now is to cut in the flow of his body. So I'll kind of show you when he's sideways and I'm actually cutting him but just like following the direction of the way they are structured so I hope that makes sense and if I think of any more tips while I'm cutting I will let you guys know but let's get into the grooming all right so I'm gonna start grooming this but I just want to show you guys kind of what I was talking about also this is where I was test trialing the other clippers and testing these out um, when I got home um, but what I mean by like going along his body just how it flows like so you would go you know down the side or the back and then you would curve with his little booty and even on the side here you would still curve and just make smaller curves because of his curve right there um so kind of just going with the flow of the body or down the legs or with the belly you would you know keep going sideways like that and then yeah like what i was saying like if you're cutting this way don't go over the same area the opposite way. So yeah, I'm gonna show you guys like the first couple of cuts and then I will time lapse it because it might take a little bit and you don't wanna watch that full thing. So, I have my brush. I'm gonna brush over this area. And, and sometimes too, I like just hold the skin there cause it'll move when I try to move. So sometimes do that but going <laughs> oh yeah it's like shearing a sheep I promise you look at all this alright let's see if I can show this side as well I'm trying to show you guys and I'll block it yeah See how it's 
curve down like that, so. <laughs> it's like you and a sheep. Okay. And then like with his legs, you would go down. I know he's black, so it's kind of hard to see, but I think you can see it's only this line. Here, let me. Alright, let me give you guys a close-up. Alright, so you can see this kind of like where I went over. That's where I went down his leg. Just to show you guys the direction. You should be cutting. You can see with his butt, I went followed that curve. And then starting down his leg. And yes, just all the hair that we're cutting off. Right, Moose? He does not like this part. <laughs> Sorry, bud, but you'll feel better. So I have most of Moose groomed right now. I'm just going to not record that part because you don't need to see me shaving his whole body. Pretty much have his whole back, his chest, and his sides. I need to do the other side and down his legs. Um, but I did think of one thing to show you guys while you're grooming is just to be careful of this flap right here. It is very sensitive and easy to just nick or cut easily so just go slow and just short motions around that area um right there and then i also want to say that i here let me show you guys i kind of stop at his neck because then i'll use the other sizes to kind of fade that out and then i will i need to finish his legs so they're very like they look bad right now so i'll go all the way down to his paws and then get his paws with the scissors you can see all of this plus all in that bag so a lot to do and then I will like once I'm done I will just like go back over him to make sure there aren't any straight pieces but yeah I'm gonna finish him up and because of the whole clipper situation and getting started later than I had wanted to I probably will trim his paws and his face tomorrow morning so I will show you guys that but Sometimes this is just the reality if you're grooming at home. We do have school tomorrow night, so he will be finished before then. So it just depends on lighting um, if I do that tonight or I will do that tomorrow morning. But I'm gonna go ahead and finish clipping the rest of his body. So I finished grooming Moose's body, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but I pretty much went until sundown, so I wasn't able to show you outside but i'll show you in a second but i did want to say if this like seems like a lot it is but also keep in mind that moose's hair is really thick one and like i probably should have groomed him so sooner than when i am but his hair is really thick he is large he's 80 pounds also i am stopping to film explain things move the camera and so that definitely makes it longer so um it probably took me like if i was not filming if i was just cutting him like normal for his body i would say an hour to an hour and a half so just keep that in mind i know it may be intimidating but yeah i just want to show you guys like sometimes this is <laughs> real life and if i had a free day and it wasn't 100 plus degrees outside then i would just do it and all in one day so yeah if you have to break up each section for you know save it for each day each morning or sorry each evening each morning then go ahead and do that you know if you really want to groom your doodle at home I believe you can you can make it work and it's okay if you can't groom him all in one day I forgot to show you guys this earlier um, but I also have this Andis cool care plus for the clipper blades 
there it goes so this is a five-in-one it's a coolant disinfectant lubricant cleaner and a brush preventative so I do spray this like throughout and after um, using the clippers so I do take care of my blades <laughs> so I don't know what's going on with the clipper situation but yeah I do have this so just wanted to mention this if you were looking for something and I think it works just fine and then for the clippers that I used I mean it's my first time using them so I feel like of course they're gonna work I feel like they would probably go out after a year but I don't know so I'm not really sold on them I don't know if I'm going to return them or not I have 60 days to decide that so I might just wait until then enough of me talking let me show you moose all right so this is what moose looks like after grooming his full body so I do leave his feet which I think looks so funny it looks like he's wearing some slippers and I'm going to have to brush him again because after I let him free from grooming his body he ran around and we just have a bunch of uh, cockerbirds in our yard so I'm gonna have to brush those out again but this is what he looks like and then also I only went up to his neck so you can kind of see where it's short and then it gets curly um, so I'll show you guys tomorrow the head face and just trimming his feet so yeah this is what he looks like you can really see how short it is and where I stopped right there and his little slipper feet which I think is so funny and then I'll check in the morning too if there's like any spots that I just missed and didn't see but I feel like I did a pretty good job on his body we'll see do you feel does it feel better you know look so handsome tomorrow so yeah we will see you guys tomorrow right say tomorrow we are finishing up Moose's groom today, his face and his paws like I showed you guys last night. Um, but I wanted to show you guys what I will be using to do that. Um, I'm going to start on his head. It's still very fluffy up top. So yesterday I used yeah, a one-fourth, I think I mentioned I used a one-fourth all over his body. And then two sizes up will be a half inch and then the in-between size is three-eighths. So we'll see and i'll show you guys closer up but if i do end up using um the half inch the two sizes up on top then i'll usually use the size in between to kind of like fade <laughs> like into his body and then just like under the ears and stuff because that doesn't need to be super long under there because no one really sees it anyways and then also like under the chin right here i like to keep it short there because it just gets gross when they eat and stuff so that's what I'm going to be using this morning clipper wise and then for trimming I use a scissor set and I love this set it is a Gimars I don't know how you say it all right so this is what it looks like and it has four pairs of scissors and it also comes with a comb as well so if you don't have one and you buy this set that it already comes with it and then it comes with extra these aren't the best I will say um, to go into the scissors but or the handles but anyway so it has a curved a thinning shear and then it also just has two like regular scissors but one is bigger and one is smaller and I've had scissors for three years about so really good condition like as you can see like if it'll focus on it just like still in really good shape no rust or anything so they've lasted me several years and you can buy them on Amazon and they're pretty inexpensive so again if you're looking for an inexpensive option I like this set I will try and find it and link it down below if I can yeah so that's all I'm gonna be using for this last section oh I also want to show you guys this is the bag of hair just from Mrs. body and it's like a pillow <laughs> but yeah he had a lot of hair and I'm sure he feels a lot better right we'll see He's like, I just want this to be over with <laughs> so I can run and play. All right. So got the clippers ready and I also went ahead and brushed him out. I just didn't show you guys, but thought I would mention I did 
brush him again and you don't have to brush him each step if you're doing it like consecutively but since I'm doing it and splitting it up into different portions then I'm gonna brush him pretty much each time before I do anything so I just want to mention that to you guys ready my moose <laughs> you look silly. Alright, so this is what he's looking like. And then I'm going to take the middle sides and kind of blend this out because you can still see between the two sizes. So I'm going to blend this out back here and kind of fade it. And then with the scissors, I will go around his eyes and like mustache and really trim this up under his beard. I did cut under there but it is kind of hard, so I'm just gonna even it out with scissors. All right, so I'm gonna start trimming his face, but before I do, I do wanna say that if you want a more teddy bear look, then definitely maybe with the blade guard size up four, start there. But I'm doing a very like summer cut just because Again, 100 plus here in Texas right now. The scissors that I will be using are thinning shears. These are your friends if you are new to cutting because it hides your mistakes more than if you were just to do a blunt cut. So I definitely use these around the eye, <laughs> around the eye area and the nose just to trim it up. So that's where I use these. And then I also use just like the regular scissors and I use this for like the mustache area mainly and then maybe I'll use it like under the beard and then to trim ears I use the curves which there you can see they're curves for the ears it just helps give that curve look and I don't have to like cut so many times and try to make it look curved so these I really like these I probably use the curved ones and the thinning shears the most out of this kit but yeah that's what I'm gonna use so I'm gonna do the eyes. Um, and so how I do that is I take the comb and I actually comb over his eyes. So comb it over and then I cut. So this is a close up. As you can see, I've cut this eye. I have not cut that one. Um, so yeah, that's what kind of what it looks like when you pull you would brush the hair forward and cut. So I'm gonna do that on the other side. So after doing the eyes, I'm not gonna do his mustache and I just cut straight back across and back. And you just wanna make sure that it's still covering his lip because that would be weird. It would look weird if you cut it too short. So just be careful of that. But yeah, I just cut straight back and still make sure that it's like covering his um, teeth and lips and stuff like that and then you can also use your comb to straighten it out and then cut it that I just cut and this is the side I have not cut just to show you guys a comparison and I have not cut his beard so that's uneven but for the mustache part definitely a lot better huh all right so now that I finished trimming his mustache and making it as even as possible um, I want to say I did go in afterwards where I just cut it straight with the regular scissors and just cleaned it up with the shearing scissors and then now I'm going to do the beard, the underneath, and just even it up. Um, I think I'm going to go in with just the regular scissors to get the length and then 
if need be I'll like go over it with the shear to help smooth it out or anything like that if needed but yeah that's what I'm gonna do I finished with the beard and I did use the comb so that might help you I would brush it forward and that would kind of show me what pieces that were uneven so I think I got that pretty even so now I'm gonna move on to the ears <laughs> What I do really is I just use the comb to brush it out and then use the curved scissors to cut off as much as I want. Just be careful of their ear flap, but yeah, that's how I do it. I would say the ears are pretty simple compared to the other pieces of the face. So this is the ear that I have done and this is the ear that I have not done and you can see like all this extra that's just been growing I did trim that up over here so and I just think it makes his ear stand out a little more and I don't mind that so I think it looks cute all right so now I'm gonna do the paws I have all of this to do on the sides and just to even it up where his nail is right here on the sides and then just yeah trimming that up so I'm gonna use the rounded scissors just to help get just really round this out around and just make it as even as possible and trim up the sides here but yeah that's what I'm gonna do next what you end up with before and after and then I went ahead and did the pin blade to cut between his paws so I just used the same clippers but without any guard just using the tin blade and trimmed up the paw pad so I'm gonna do the rest for the fort and then we will be done right Moosey you ready to be done ready to be done Sorry it's a little loud out here, but um, this is what Moose looks like at the end. Hi, my Moosey. Of course, had to put a cute bandana to finish it off, but all of his paws and your face and your ears. Yeah. You look so handsome, right? Handsome boy. You handsome. So that is the whole grooming process of grooming your doodle at home. I hope this was helpful. I hope you found something that would help you if you are starting to groom your doodle at home if you're a beginner. I am not perfect, but the more times I do it, the better I get. So I definitely encourage you. It is a little intimidating, but just try it, taking some of these tips and you're not gonna butcher your doodle, I promise you that. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will catch you in our next video. Bye friends. Say bye.